before we jump into the rest of this wonderful video and talk about all the amazing things I experienced while playing these attachments for so goddamn long, I just want to say that this is actually a two-part video that involves around the three other attachments, not including Bully Boys and Greeting Tight, because, shocker, I split this video up into two, because I did not want to blabber on for that long in one long period. So, if you want to see information about the Green Tide and the Bully Boys and everything that revolves around there, and you feel like some information is actually missing from this video, it's most likely because it's in the previous video where I analyzed, like I said, Green Tide and Bully Boy. So if you want to see that video, go check the card up here and you can go right to it. But let's continue with this wonderful video. Now, next is going to be Dread Mob. Now, Dread Mob is, um, Dread Mob is an interesting one because it's one that I didn't do too much experimentation on. I had the least amount of games with Dread Mob, I would think, because obviously I didn't buy all these models. I'm not insane and spent $3,000 on it. I simply kind of borrowed lists from my friends who were offering them, who just so happened to have all the lists available. So I didn't run too many lists with Dreadmob because I had to cut it short because of time. This list wants you to build two ways. It either wants you to build Orky Walkers plus vehicles, or wants you to go into mech-related squads like looters, um, potentially uh, mega knobs with Warboss and Mega Armor, um, and, that's and that's more or less it, and somewhat mech guns. Or you can do a nice combination of both and have an efficient amount of stuff walking that way. Honestly, looters are shine pretty well on this list, but it's an optional thing. So obviously, it goes heavily hand in hand to being a shooty based attachment that works on to pressing the button. You press the button and you get more buffs. You get to choose between lethal hits, hazardous, and what's in face. I've, I've, I've talked about this before on uh, my dread mob anal, anal, my dread mob detachment analyst video, but more or less, it makes you better at shooting. Basically, this attachment really wants you focusing on shooting. Melee works, it still works very well because obviously it's an orc army, but shooting is where you want to be going with this, and all about having a nice mix between, or taking solely of, orc walkers, or um, mech related squads. Now, what is the general list theme? What are you going to be taking in this list? Well, first one's going to be killer cans. Now, it, you're not taking as many as you think you are, but you are taking killer cans. I personally only ran a one squad of six with Grotzookas um, and Can Claws, obviously you can't take Can Claws, but like, these are your main Orky vehicles, these are what you're going to be using mainly to get off um, some damage um, with your vehicles, because they're going to, they're, they're good, but you're not taking as many as you think you are, trust me, just, you're not taking as many as you think you are, even though um, you're, uh, you're um, even though it's a whole, like, kind of like, you know, dread mob attachment. Now, next one is going to be Big Mech with Shock Attack Gun, I took him, he is optional, but he's great for have running into a 15 squad looter to actually make them somewhat viable because now having lethal hits, sustain hits, or um, uh, AP plus, AP plus one on critical hits, um, it's actually quite good. You can actually get it quite an efficient roll off with them with the ability to have some access to more, um, to kind of like, kind of like a, uh, the hunt one where it's like if your strength is greater than the toughness, you get that, um, plus one to wound. So like, I think it works, but you don't have to take it if you don't really want to. Uh, mech, insert angel noises here, because mech is absolutely a god saver in this list. It makes everything so much better. It makes your Gorkonauts, your Morkonauts, your Killer Cans better. You're running three of these, and you're spreading them out between squads. You're running them inside transportation of, um, of, uh, Morkonauts and Gorkonauts, or trucks, if you want to get with that combination of looters. Like, you make them work really well. You're taking three mechs, trust me, you're not, you're not never taking three mechs. They're the god savior in this detachment, and you need them desperately. Next one's going to be Morkonaut and Gorkonaut. Now, not necessarily critically acclaimed, but I do think they actually work really well. They're just, their shooting works better. The, uh, the boiler, this whatever it is, like, the, the enhanced boiler detachment allows you to get that movement off. It works. These guys actually can benefit really heavily from this lethal hits or um, sustain hits. Obviously, you're going to be choosing. I think it works. More or less, I think, maybe the Gorkonaut over the Morkonaut, because Morkonaut already has so many hazardous weapons. I think Gorkonaut is a better in this situation, but Morkonaut can still work best. Even if you want to take both as well, I think both actually works well. I didn't take both. I only took Gorkonaut. Um, but I think you can take both if you were up to it. Looters, again, optional. You don't need them, but can work in this attachment. You want to feel free to. And MSU units. You need MSU units. You need Gretchens. You need Storm Boys. You need those things in this attachment. You do in lots of attachments, in all attachments, but honestly, this attachment mainly because you're having most of your points taken up by Killer Cans and Morkonauts and Gorkonauts that, um, you want some MSU units. And plus, with the Gretchens having the Kine... The, conne the conniving, conniving runts, like one where you get that damage off. Yeah, honestly, take MSU units. 
you can never go wrong with more MSU units. That's what, that's what I have understood from this attachment. You can never go wrong with more MSU units. Now, is this attachment for you? Now, this attachment can be built in so many different ways at this point. No one has mastered the art of a dread mob yet because there's just so many ways you can go into it. You can go heavy into looters, mechs, or you can go heavy into the, the whole just walker side. You can take freaking two stompers, go fully into death dreads, killer cans, more canorts, gore canorts, Daka jet, I don't know, it wouldn't even work, but like, you go fully into that, like, there's so many ways you can build this, and having the right ratio between mech squads and mech walkers and mech guns and whatnot is hard, so I honestly think if you like creativity and you like experimentation and you like kind of like isolating it down to your own individual one, Dreadmob is going to work perfectly for you because it's all about experimenting to find how you work in attachments. Some people like Death Dreads, some people don't, me included, I hate Death Dreads. People like Gorkonauts, some people don't like Gorkonauts, people like Morkonauts better than Gorkonauts. Six squads of killer cans or three squads of killer cans. Like, how do you operate? It's all up to you. This is all about the fundamental of choosing your own and kind of going off that. So if you like the idea of shooty orcs as well, if you like shooty orcs, this this is your, trust me. But honestly, this has so many ways to build it. You can even build it in a fully Gretchen-based way. You can build it in a fully shooty-based way with just orc inventory, or you can build it in a fully Dreadmob vehicle-based way. Whatever you're up to, this is the creative side of orcs. Trust me, you want this list, you take walkers or you take whatever. So creative side, awesome. Oh, next one is going to be the big hunt attachment moving on we've got my favorite and most beloved attachment with the big hunt attachment now how do these bad boys work well these are all about picking certain squads and characters to be the biggest and the baddest basically just buff them to a crazy extent but make them in a way that allows you to hunt down most of the enemy targets in your army so it really focuses on a couple of squads and a couple of characters to just buff like crazy and just be like this just this, this, this threat on the board kind of and it is very, very killy based. This art, this, this squad here, this detachment is all about being killy. You're not not seeing killy units. So honestly, I just at this point would not even bother with trying to run like any kind of defensive in this because it's all about offense, being there, hunting the enemy, and getting in there. So all about killy, all about hunting, and all about making certain squads better and bigger. Now, list general themes. As you may see, it is very small because trust me, it is very small. Beast Boss and Beast Nagger Boys and Squigger Boys plus Beast Boss on Squigger Sword. These are what you're taking, these are your main units, and these are all that matters. Literally, you could basically build it any other way, but if you take max Beast Boss and Beast Nagger Boys and like one or two squads of max Beast Squigger Boys and Beast Boss and Squigger Sword, your list is going to look pretty good. Now, I think Kill Rigs and Hunter Rigs can work in this. Kill Rigs more than Hunter Rigs because Kill Rigs offer that, um, that, um, that turret gun, the, the War Tower is actually really good. You can get that chance for lethal hits, it can work, um, but it necessarily isn't crucial to your list. And honestly, you can do better with trucks, honestly, because like they're just better, they heal themselves, and they're just cheaper. So I would say meh. But honestly, if you max out these ones, except for the Squig Hole Boys and Beast Boss and Squig Saw, because they're too expensive now, you take one, or you take two, or you take none, because you're not taking three, because it's just way too expensive. Um, and overall, you're looking at a pretty strong thematic list there. Honestly, about choosing bad prey and hunting down, having elite units just to get in there and tear through. So, if you like the idea of really killer units, isolating one specific unit with, like, their prey, which allows you to pick a monster character or vehicle and hunt them down, um, or you like the idea of having a consistent amount of damage output with these units, I think the big hunt works for you. In case... The Big Hunt is also worse than War Tribe, because honestly, War Tribe is just the better version of Big Hunt. But the Big Hunt is more thematic and more meant for the killy side of Orcs. So if you like the idea of killy Orcs, you like the idea of Squigs, you like the idea of Beast Staggers, and you want to get in there with a bunch of rough, hard-hitting Orcs, then I think the Big Hunt is just for you. But if you are running them, quick tip here, do not run full Squig Old Boys, because it's just way too expensive. Now, last one is going to be Cult of Speed. They're probably the most overlooked and most... I wouldn't say underrated, but most just generally not touched list in the attachment. Because, first of all, there's a good reason for that. Now, this wants you to conquer the board as fast as possible. They want as fast of board control as physically possible with somewhat high OC, I would say somewhat high OC vehicles in the playing field. When I was playing them, a lot of it was like, okay, round two, round one, it's go time. Like, this is like World Eaters on steroids in terms of, like, how fast you need to go. Like, you need to be up there and go, because your units will die if you do not have 
in there. If you're not up there and in there as fast as possible, your units will die because, trust me, they're not strong enough. They're like T7, some of them, like, they'll get demolished. Like, and with you giving up so much bring it down already, you just need to be in there. You need to be in there, getting in there as fast as physically possible. And it really focuses on shooting some melee. We think that the war bikers and the death copters, but most of it is based off shooting. A lot of attachments like Daka Storm, like the Sustain Hits 2 um, or Sustain Hits 1, it's just good. It's, it's what you want and what you ha it's how you go. And their, their whole army rule, having like the advance and charge and basically just making their movement better, is just generally asking you to be up there, ready to go by round two, ready to do whatever you need to do. Now, your general list themed is going to be very different than you think you are. This list is not what you think it's going to be. Trust me, you think it's buggy heavy, it's not buggy heavy. It's actually a very, very plain list that many people just get kind of confused on when they run. If you, this, is an, this is an effective list, by the way. If you want to run a creative list, you run a bunch of buggies, but this is an effective list. First one's going to be war bikers. They're great for units. They're great GP units, general purpose units. They're just out there doing things. Either scoring, having some kind of melee threat, or just being large squads to tank some damage if you need them to. Um, death copters are going to be 75% of your damage. Like, I, I know I say that, but Death Copters are literally amazing. You're taking three squads of six Death Copters. I'm sorry to say, but the buggies are just no-go in this list. They're just, they're, just not, they're just not good enough to be taken in this list. You're running three, 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 three squads of six Death Copters in there, doing damage and getting crazy stuff off. Now, specific buggies can work, but it also depends on how you're running your list. If you want to run some kind of scoring, you run the Shockdown Dragster. You want to do some more, more killy action, you can run the, um, uh, the Rocket... I keep getting all the names. The Rocket Truck Squig Buggy. Um, uh, the, oh, the, boom, the Boom Dacker Snaz Wagon. Like, the Rocket Truck Squig Buggy and the Boom Dacker Snaz Wagon can work. The Custom Booster Blaster and the um, Mega Jet scrap, jet scrap Scrap Jet can actually work effectively for damage. But, honestly, unless you have a specific need and purpose for them, they're just they're not good. They're just, they're just so hard to use. And they're just too many... Just too many things can go wrong with them, and I wouldn't say that. And one truck and one knob squad, honestly, to get that assault ramp, because you get the assault ramp ability in this in this attachment. Having that is crazy for some melee access, and honestly, I would love it. You may see no planes in here. You may see none of the interesting units, because like I said again, cold speed is not what you want it to be. It is not a thematic list where you get to like, oh, just take whatever you want. It is war bikers, death copters, truck and knobs. That's how it works. And buggies, one or two buggies, if you want it to work. Otherwise, it's just not working. I know it's sad, but it just doesn't work otherwise. Uh, how is this list? Is this list for you? Let's go over this. Now, this list is not really for the faint of heart. Unless you're willing to go heavily into Death Goblin, and heavily into War Bikers, this is not going to work for you. It's just too hard. It's the worst attachment in the Codex. And unless you go heavily into this attachment thing, it just does not work for you. But if you like fast manipulation of movement, you like the idea of deep striking, because obviously you're going to have to run a lot of death copters, and you like fast moving units to just do a bunch of bunch of damage, then trust me, this detachment is for you. And it also, it's about going fast. So if you like the idea of just being up there as fast as possible, fast melee, fast shooting, this attachment is for you. Now, I'm not going to talk about War Horde, because War Horde, obviously, we've played with it for a year, and I don't want to talk about it anymore, because I'm sick of War Horde. I don't want to talk about War Horde. But, War Horde is actually very good for a basic attachment. If you have a list, you don't want to build a new list, you've built a real list, you like the list you've built, then stick with War Horde. War Horde is honestly the better to hunt at this point. Like, it's just it's just, it's just really good. The, cons the consistent sustain hits, the ability to have um, uh, hard as nails... Like, all those effective stratagems we grew up with in this detachment, like, that's what you want. So honestly, War Horde always works at the end of the day. If you don't like any of these and all these sound absolutely garbage, you just want to build your own custom list, go for War Horde. It's always a nice ability. You get the same hits in melee. Who wouldn't want that? There's no lock. In, there's no locks in what detachments you need to take, what you need to say. It's open to the public, and you can just take whatever the frick you want in War Horde. But that's going to be me analyzing every single list or every single attachment in the 40k uh, or or codex. I'm really hoping you enjoyed this video. I definitely had a lot of lot and lot of pain having to play all those matches, but I had a lot of fun. I've learned so much, and I hope you've learned a lot from this video. So that's going to be all me today. Hope you enjoyed this video, and do all the cool YouTube stuff. Subscribe. I don't know what else to say. Goodbye.